starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Friday. It is June 5th. And this is really cool. I mean, whether you are a Texan, a San Antonian. Phil Collins, who likes <laughs> Alamo stuff, but he's he's already turned over a lot of his private collection uh, back to the Alamo. Yeah, this story is on KSAT.com. You can own a piece of history. Some Alamo battle relics are actually going up for auction tomorrow. That's right. The auction is going to be taking place in New Braunfels at... 10 a.m. at the Burley Auction Gallery. This is all part of Alamo Ballot Battle Relics and Republic of Texas documents that's are, that are going up for auction. Yeah, so if you're wondering where these came from, uh, the, these relics, such as cannonballs, lance tips, bullets, and other items were unearthed during 2008 excavation just outside the Alamo's north wall, at which some of the most intense battles took place, according to a press release. And you don't have to actually go to the auction. You, anyone is able to bid online with live bidding or through phone or absentee bidding as well. Yeah. I, just looking here, I'm running down the, uh, you're seeing the list right there of items, uh, some Civil War firearms. There's actually some Bowie knives included on this list as well. Yeah, gold and silver coins, early American furniture, Pennsylvania pottery. Um, is, is this, am I saying this right? A Chippendale chest, an 18th century Chippendale? That's what it says. All right. Yes. Uh, a 1780s Philadelphia painted face grandfather clock, furniture, pewter cabinets and sinks. I mean, they found a lot of stuff out there. And the fully restored 1926 Ford Model T with push button start. That's probably the big one. That's, uh, that's an unbelievably impressive list. So again, so tomorrow up in New Braunfels at a Burley Auction Gallery, 10 a.m., that's at 134 Deborah Drive in New Braunfels. And if you can go to ksat.com, you can find the links of also where you can bid online. Let's take a look at your rundown. In Minneapolis, after days of protests, a celebration of Floyd's life. The city's police chief taking a knee as the body of George Floyd passed by in the hearse. Protesters marched in downtown San Antonio into the Bear County Courthouse for the sixth straight day. The mayor is asking for patience. Hold me accountable, okay? Nobody else. Sir. People will make mistakes. We all make mistakes. People who have protested within the last two weeks are being advised to get tested for COVID-19. Although some protesters wear masks, there's minimal social distancing within the crowd. What if I was George Floyd? If I was George Floyd? That powerful message from those NFL stars was posted last night calling on the league to condemn racism. It comes on the heels of a new apology from Drew Brees. The chairwoman of the Bear County Republican Party says she will not step down despite calls for her resignation from the governor and Senator John Cornyn. And we are learning disturbing new details about the final moments of Ahmaud Arbery's life. During a hearing Thursday, an investigator testified that suspect Travis McMichael shot Arbery then used the N-word as he stood over his body. A light show in the skies over the nation's capital. Lightning struck the Washington Monument and two National Guardsmen were seriously injured during a lightning strike near the White House. J.C. Penney says it expects to close 154 stores in 20 states. The nine-year-old is selling homemade jewelry in her front yard. The money from Cameron's bracelets helping families in hurting neighborhoods of the Twin Cities. Every time a customer comes, I always Please tell them why we're doing this. Amazingly, a dog that was swept away in the landslide survived. It swam back to land and was brought to safety by a helicopter rescue crew. <laughs> Well, the weekend is finally here, and we are talking about extreme heat moving into the forecast by next week. But that question begs the question, what's the weather going to be like this weekend? Let's go outside with live cam. It's looking, it, you know, this haze has been kind of following us all week, Justin, but I mean, so has the heat, and the heat's going up and up. Yeah, it seems like every day we're just adding a few degrees, and by the time we get into next week, it's it's really going to soar. And that's because uh, tropical storm Cristobal is going to move well to our east. We're going to be on the, the back side of things where it is going to be very toasty. We could see some record setting heat, by the way. And uh, right now we're seeing temperatures in the 70s for the most part. And uh, it is awful warm even right now with the humidity and uh, temperatures. There you go. 80 degrees here in San Antonio, 81 in New Braunfels, 76 Kerrville, 73 right now in Rock Springs. In the forecast next couple days, bottom line here is it's, it's going to be hot. 95 Saturday, 97 on Sunday. Just sent out our weather push alert. And basically, I said, it's great swimming weather. It for sure will be uh, next few days. Uh, let's take a look at the satellite picture. 
and you can see where the uh, morning clouds are. They're starting to scatter out just like they did yesterday. A little earlier today, though, 77 Boulevardy, 76 right now in comfort. Pollen count mold is moderate. This is just in dropped a little bit more. It continues to drop And the forecast for today. We'll call for 93, mostly sunny and southerly winds about 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll talk more about those extreme temperatures coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you so much, Justin. Uh, we're looking at I-37 and I-10 right now. All lanes of traffic are open and traffic is running smoothly. Also new this morning, police have identified the woman killed late Wednesday night on the north side as 39-year-old April LeClaire. Officers responded to the 3800 block of West Avenue just after 1030. When they arrived, officers say a man inside would not open the door to the apartment, but kept requesting medical help. When the 43 year old, uh, when 43 year old rather Thomas Roberts finally opened the door, officers saw the body of a woman on the floor with injuries to her arms and hands. Roberts now facing murder charges. Other top stories we are following today. We're still waiting to learn the names of the family of six found dead at a home in Stone Oak yesterday afternoon. Police tell us the husband and wife, both in their 30s and their four children, ranged in 11 months to four years old. It all started as a welfare check yesterday morning when officers went to that home in the 100 block of Red Willow in Stone Oak after a man notified police he hadn't heard from one of the victims in a while. Uh, once police were able to enter the home, they found the family inside an SUV in the garage. Officers also found two dead cats inside a basket in the front seat. Chief William McManus says evidence suggests the deaths were not an accident, but rather appear to be a suicide. We've just learned the name of a woman arrested overnight after police say she stabbed her boyfriend. 35 year old Mar Maria Elisa Aguilares is facing a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Officers responded to the 400 block of Ward Avenue around 1145 last night. The victim was found in his neighbor's driveway with multiple stab wounds to the chest, arm and leg. Now, police say the incident began with an argument that quickly escalated. The victim was taken to Bamsey and at last check was doing OK. Police are investigating what led a woman to stab her father in the abdomen late last night. Officers say the 60 year old man is currently in the hospital in serious condition. It happened just before midnight in the 8700 block of Wellesley Manor on the northwest side. According to officers, a 22 year old woman was off her medication when the incident happened. The daughter was detained for a mental evaluation. A local black owned brewery is making waves in the industry worldwide. Weathered Souls Brewing has launched its campaign Black is Beautiful, aimed to raise awareness on racial inequality and police brutality. The campaign was inspired by the recent protests over the death of George Floyd. Alicia Barretta live at Weathered Souls Brewing with more on the story. Good morning. Well, we've seen it. Many have taken their outrage or outcry to the streets to protest. Others have decided to donate to nonprofits and black business owners are stepping up to make a change with me, Marcus. Marcus, good morning. So you've launched this campaign, Black is Beautiful. Where does this idea stem from? Uh, so this idea stems from basically being, being a black business owner and wanting to give back. I had to find a way to uh, you know, show my support for equality and uh, inclusion amongst everyone. And so far, you launched this on Monday. Already you've gotten huge support. Here in San Antonio, you mentioned more than 10, but this has reached breweries worldwide. How many so far total? Um, so we're sitting at around 290 breweries so far. Uh, Texas has done a wonderful job. We're sitting at about 60 breweries for Texas and 12 for San Antonio. So the uh, reception has been amazing. And then the Imperial Stout, it's specific. What are the reasons behind choosing this specific um, type of beer? So dealing with the stout, you know, it ranges in colors from uh, deep, dark brown chocolate to the blackest of black. So I felt like dealing with the colors of skin, obviously that's a large range of color hue. And so a stout would be perfect. And so many people already showing their support. We'll be sticking around here at Weathered Souls Brewing with Marcus to talk more about why he wanted to um, launch this campaign and exactly who in San Antonio has shown their support for this campaign. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia, so much. 907 right now, 80 degrees still ahead on GMS 8 and 9 on your Friday morning. Some car owners in California won't be leaving any food in their car anymore. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, how it was destroyed by one very hungry bear. Plus, scientists in Sweden are hoping alpacas can help them find a vaccine for the coronavirus. We'll take a look at how their process works.
And up next, officers in Buffalo are facing backlash after a video was released of them pushing over a 75-year-old man. We've got the latest with David Sears. That's after the break. Let's check the markets right now. And the Dow is up a whopping 738 points at 2719. Welcome back. The unemployment numbers are out for May and they are better than many expected. And another incident involving police and a protester put an elderly man in the hospital with a head injury. In the meantime, a police officer in Illinois puts his life in danger to save a 12 year old and a touching moment to start the weekend. David Sears, good morning to you. We always like starting the weekend off with some good news and some touching moments. Please you. feel good. Please, please we give got us some. some. We got plenty of those. Okay. We'll get to them in just a second. First, you know, with some cities across the country continuing to open up businesses and other cities starting to get people back to work, the unemployment numbers are out this morning for May. Two and a half million jobs were added. The unemployment rate dropped from 14.7 to 13.3 percent. Another sign that the job losses and layoffs from the coronavirus have hit the bottom. The number of people applying for unemployment benefits has declined for nine state weeks. And we showed you this a second ago, but here it is again. The stock market this morning up just a little over 700 points in reaction to those good unemployment numbers. We've got some more disturbing video for you from this morning from a protest. This happening in Buffalo, a 75 year old man. You see him there getting pushed over. He gets shoved back, falls backwards and hits his head on the concrete sidewalk. There are a couple of angles to look at, so the evidence is pretty clear, and there are pictures of blood coming from the back of his head. Because of that, those two police officers have been suspended without pay, and an investigation is underway. The mayor says he was disturbed by the video. The man has a serious head injury and is in stable condition. You're looking at and listening to video from a body cam of a police officer saving a 12 year old girl's life, getting her out of a burning apartment building. This happening in Rock Falls, Illinois. The girl trapped and terrified. The officer acting fast had to break the window. He was talking to her through the whole thing while he was getting her to safety. He was able to pull her through the window. It was hard to tell, but officers actually arrived before firefighters got there. So they pulled the squad car up to the window and then climbed on top of the car. And that's how they were able to break that window and get that girl out. The fire is now under investigation. All right, let's take it to California. This is an SUV and that. Yes, right in there. Look at there. <laughs> Mr. Bear stuck inside. Apparently some good smelling food inside the bear went to town to completely trash the inside of that vehicle. Then the police had to smash the rear window just to get the bear out. So a quick reminder, don't leave food in your car if you live in bear country. And this will tug at the heartstrings to get your weekend started. A little boy standing in the garage, still in his pajamas, telling his dad goodbye. Dad is a state trooper in Illinois and he's headed off to work. Then the little guy does not want daddy to leave. Bye. Goodbye, Daisy. <laughs> Wait, Mom says, go give him another kiss. And there he goes. Watch. Right, here he goes. Dad says, all right, come on. Oh. There he goes. Give Daddy another kiss before he leaves to go to work. And then Mom was worried about his feet getting wet. <laughs> oh, Typical mom. You don't worry about that. How's you don't that? worry about that kind of thing after a while, right? How's that? How's yeah. that? How cute is that? So there you go. There you start your weekend. Little cute video. Little guy kissing Dad goodbye to go to work. Coming up a little bit later on, you're back with RJ. We're going to talk more about yeah. the Spurs plan. I'm so excited. We're very excited to have yes. the Spurs back in action. Yes. Have a chance to be in the playoffs. Yeah. Who, who would have thought? Yeah, we'll start. Now, this, this is going to go all through the fall, though. I mean, or at least half we're, the fall. We're okay with that. You're okay with that? Yeah, sure. Right. Why not? Talk about NBA coming back. All right. Thank you, David. See you in a bit. Right now, it's 915, 80 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And... We are going to now check in with meteorologist Justin Horn as we are hours closer to the beginning of our weekend. Yes. Justin, it's going to be a hot one. It is going to be hot for sure. That's going to be the big story going forward. Good weekend for swimming, though. And before we jump into the forecast, we've got a junior meteorologist this morning that we want to share with you. Take a listen. Hello, San Antonio. This is Michael Control Trump of Argus. We're here at KSAT 12. Let's see our weekly weather report. This is our weekly weather report. Wednesday, it'll be 86 degrees high with, it's going to be 
uh, cloudy and sunny. Saturday, it'll be 75 degrees high, but chance of showers. So, I don't think it's a good idea to go into your pool. Neither do I think it's a good idea to barbecue. Back to you, Miss Ola. That stash. Is he like 40? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's the cutest I, thing. I, I, what's, I mean, the, what's more impressive, the uh, mustache or the collar outside the jacket? You know, he's got, a, know. He's got flair. He and his clicker, and that, that, clicker Roku, yes. that Roku remote. The KSAT 12 graphic, mm -hmm. all of it was incredible. We appreciate that. He's in the third grade at uh, East Central ISD. So wow, great very, job. very nice. Was, yes. Yeah, you and I have to wait till November to redo the facial <laughs> hair. I know, right? <laughs> that was cute. Oh, man. Okay, good stuff. Uh, let's now talk about what's going on down there in the tropics. We've got uh, tropical depression right now, crystal ball. And right now it, it looks fairly ragged, and that's due in large part to the fact that it's been over land. It's really lopsided, so the center of circulation is somewhere around right there, but all the uh, thunderstorm activity is on the east side of things. This is going to re-strengthen, it looks like, as it re-emerges over the Gulf of Mexico, and it's going to shoot north pretty quickly. Uh, the latest track uh, takes it up towards uh, New Orleans uh, and Louisiana. It looks like the track's not showing up there. Sometimes it takes a while for the data to feed in. There it goes, uh, but we think that'll be uh, early Monday morning when this thing's making landfall. And I say New Orleans, it could be anywhere in Louisiana, okay? Uh, and this thing's gonna be moving pretty fast. There's gonna be some rain with it, but thankfully with it moving as fast as it is, flooding shouldn't be a huge issue. And winds don't get uh, crazy out of control here. We're talking 50 miles per hour, but we'll continue to keep an eye on it. Bottom line is we're not gonna see anything from it other than heat. Outside right now, 80 degrees, dew point is at 72. Southerly winds at about seven miles per hour. And we've got a heat index at 84. Here's the setup. We've got a ridge of high pressure sitting over West Texas right now. There were some big time thunderstorms yesterday up across the Texas Panhandle on the edge of this thing. And sometimes these thunderstorms can work all the way down into South Texas, but that is not the case. This go around looks like that wall stay well to the north and this ridge is going to keep things really quiet today and uh, plenty hot as uh, we go forward. Uh, so there's like the uh, visible satellite picture. And you can see we've got those morning clouds developing. These are not rain clouds. This is just that morning stratus deck that likes to develop. Here around Bear County, those clouds are starting to break up. So the quicker these break up, the faster those temperatures ramp up. And we're already at 80 degrees here in town. 75 Holotus, 76 in Hondo. You got 79 Creso Springs, 79 right now in Catula. And dew points, uh, they stay high all day long. So we got a dew point right around 70 through uh, this evening and that's going to contribute to a heat index. Forecast heat index today, 97 here in town. You'll see some triple digits for your feels like temperature out west. And even some of our eastern counties where the temperature may be a little bit lower, but the dew points are higher, you'll still see some triple digit uh, heat indices later this afternoon. Bottom line is it's going to be hot going forward, and uh, we see that here in the forecast. Even though that ridge sort of shifts out of the way, here comes uh, that tropical storm, and it is on the back side of that where uh, not only are we going to have a frontal boundary, we're out ahead of this frontal boundary, but it, uh, we're also going to get some of that sinking air. And again, this is just one forecast model, but it has temperatures well into the triple digits. Thankfully, this frontal boundary moves through on Wednesday and cools us down some. I say that, it's still showing 101 for Wednesday. That is cooler than Tuesday. Uh, forecast for today, 93. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. 95 tomorrow, 97 Sunday. 101 Monday, 104 is what we're looking at right now for Tuesday, which would tie a record and then a little cooler, but certainly drier. We lose the humidity Wednesday into Thursday, guys. Yeah, let's lose that humidity, please. It's yeah, real. 101, 104. What is that garbage? I don't, I don't know. like it that. Ain't. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll lodge a formal complaint later, Justin. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Fair I'm, enough. A, I'm a good letter writer. 920 right now, 80 degrees. <laughs> Still ahead at GMSA at 9. One mountain lion takes a cat nap in an urban environment, and another gives birth in the wild. That's coming up next in today's Take a Look at This. Nine twenty-three. One mountain lion takes a cat nap in an urban environment, and another gives birth in the wild. CNN's Jeremy Roth has that and more in today's look at this. 
a huge mountain lion was found lying around under an SUV in Colorado. It was spotted under the vehicle in a garage in Longmont. Wildlife officials responded and captured the big cat using tranquilizers. They later transported it to a remote area and safely released it. Officials say it isn't uncommon for mountain lions to enter urban areas. They say the animals will often target livestock or even domestic pets. But thankfully, this lion was only in town for a cat nap. And while that cat was being lazy, others were being quite busy. Officials shared images of three adorable mountain lion cubs recently born in California's Santa Monica Mountains. The National Park Service had been tracking the cubs' mother's movements for months when they made the discovery. They say the births of the girl and two boys brings much needed genetic diversity to the area's lion population. Finally, take a look into the past courtesy of cutting edge technology that allowed a new study in Mexico to determine where the earliest and largest known Mayan temple once stood. The new remote sensing tech uses laser pulses to create detailed models of any terrain. Once found, researchers were able to uncover precious artifacts such as axes made of jade. The site, presumed to have been used for rituals, was built as early as 1000 BCE and covers more ground than Egypt's Great Pyramids of Giza. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. We know about scientists working day and night to find a treatment or a vaccine for COVID-19. What if we told you that in Sweden, Tyson the alpaca is contributing to research? After the 12-year-old alpaca was immunized with virus protein, scientists say they started isolating tiny antibodies in his blood that could block the infection. They're hoping this can lead to a vaccine. As for Tyson, scientists say he will re be retiring soon. Oh. Well, in Europe, some breweries have figured out a way for customers to buy drinks ahead of time. This is in order to help bars that were closed down due to the coronavirus restrictions. As bars slowly reopen, up to a million free prepaid beers will be waiting for customers. All right. Also in Europe, uh, as more public places reopen, an art gallery in Paris is finding creative ways to make us follow social distancing guidelines. The gallery is using winged paper mache hats inspired by a Chinese dynasty to do just that. The headgear has long extensions to keep art lovers three feet apart. They can also be artful or carry a message uh, for Pride Month. We need those. Not the first time we've seen some sort of fashion accessory that's gonna help us. Because we have the shoes. Yeah, the, the big shoes. The big shoes. Like they almost look like clown shoes, yeah. but it's just, again to help enforce. Right. I can't even walk distance. on my own two feet. <laughs> That's a whole separate subject. 926, <laughs> 80 degrees. There's still a lot more on GMSA at nine after a few months with no sports. Yes, there's finally hope for some basketball for fans in the near future. RJ Marquez and David Sears will join us later in the newscast to tell us the latest on that approval of the NBA restart plan. Can't wait to talk more about that. And after the break, Cena's Camilla Bernal joins us uh, to talk about the ongoing concerns regarding protests and fears of coronavirus spreading perhaps even more. New this morning at 9, police are investigating a deadly crash on the northwest side. We were tracking this, uh, this accident all morning long. Officers first received a call around 3.30 this morning for a wrong way driver on I-10 West at Dezavala Road. That's right. Police tell us the driver eventually hit a concrete median and continued to drive into the divider in the construction zone out there at Lock and Terra Parkway just outside Loop 1604. That SUV flipped over and caught fire. Officers say the driver was ejected from the SUV and pronounced dead at the scene. This accident tied up traffic in both directions for hours this morning. The victim's name has not yet been released. Well, in Minneapolis Thursday, family, friends and supporters joined together to honor George Floyd. His death and others have sparked a nationwide call for reform. Camilla Bernal joins us live from Minneapolis with the latest on the story. Good morning, Camilla. Good morning, Mark and Sarah, and that reform appears to be coming at least in part from the city council here in Minneapolis. They're now saying they're going to place a restraining order on the use of police force. This is information that's coming to us just in the last couple of minutes. And what that means is that they're going to look at the way that police work in this city, and they're saying that they're going to have to be held accountable for their actions. It's what these protesters are asking for, and it's the way they're saying could honor the memory of George Floyd. George Floyd was remembered Thursday in Minneapolis at the first of several memorials planned in his honor. When you spoke to George, they felt like they was the president because that's how he made you feel. 
At one point, attendees standing in silence for eight minutes and 46 seconds, the same amount of time one officer kept his knee on Floyd's neck as he died. Video of Floyd's death while in police custody has sparked nationwide protest and a broader discussion about the inequalities of race in America. Not two justice systems in America, one for black America and one for white America. What we endeavor to achieve is equal justice for the United States of America. Meanwhile, the four former Minneapolis police officers present at Floyd's death have all been arrested and charged. Derek Chauvin charged with second degree murder, third degree murder and second degree manslaughter. The three others charged with aiding and abetting Chauvin. Minnesota officials acknowledge the case will be difficult to prosecute. It's very difficult to hold the police accountable. And Reverend Al Sharpton said the push towards equality will continue. You changed the world, George. We're going to keep marching, George. And the Reverend also announcing that there will be a march in August in Washington, D.C. They say it's going to be led by the families of black people who have died in the hands of police custody. This is also going to commemorate the 57th anniversary of the demonstrations for civil rights. Mark, Sarah. Now, Camilla, following all these marches and protests, what do concerns what concerns do health officials have about the coronavirus? Well, Sarah, they're very concerned, specifically because they say that this is not exactly following those suggestions that we've been given to essentially wash your hands, keep your distance, wear a face covering. All of those things are not happening all the time here in these protests and not only here, but across the country. So the CDC is recommending that anybody who was out protesting, who was out in the crowds and can get a test should get a test because, of course, they're very worried about all of these numbers increasing and then the of course, the virus spreading. And so the idea here is to try to be able to trace the virus as much as possible within those groups that have been out protesting. And they're asking people that if you can stay home, you should still remain at home, despite the fact that all of this is going on. They want people to keep a distance and to really be careful with the way they're hanging out and encountering other people, because moving forward, it could cause a spike and an outbreak in numerous cities across the country. See, that's Camilla Bernal live in Minneapolis. Thank you, Camilla. Try to have a good weekend. Back here at home, let's go back outside with live cam, Sarah. Yep, it, it's muggy, it's hot. If you have frizzy hair like me, well, just embrace it. Right, Justin? Embrace it and love it. Uh, if you were out last night, did you notice that it was bright outside? We had our full moon, uh, strawberry moon. In fact, we got a great picture coming in on our KSAT Connect. Irma sent this in from San Antonio. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. We had clear skies last night for the most part. Those clouds built in, though, this morning. And now we're dealing with partly cloudy skies here in San Antonio. Now, if you're up in the Hill Country, Kerrville, Bandera, it's a little cloudier there, mostly cloudy uh, for you guys. 76 there in Kerrville right now. 80 at the airport, 78 Randolph, 75 in Floresville with a few clouds for you. Forecast for today, 91, 2 o'clock, 93 by 5 o'clock. But I'll tell you, it's going to feel more like 95, 96 when you factor in that humidity. And that humidity stays with us, at least in some capacity, into the weekend. We're going to talk more about your weekend forecast here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Checking Transkai construction out there at 10 and Ralph Fair Road. You be advised, folks who live in that area, trust me, they already know about it. <laughs> they know. Yeah. We'll raise a glass to racial equality. San Antonio's own Weathered Souls Brewing Company launched a, launched a campaign this week that has caught the attention of breweries worldwide. Proceeds from the project will be donated to organizations that support a reform on police brutality. Alicia Pereira live with the founder of Weathered Souls with more on what sparked the idea. Alicia? Good morning. Well, there's a meaning behind every word of this campaign. Black is beautiful. Marcus, there, that specific reason, specific beer, why is that? Man, it's for equality and supporting uh, the initiative of inclusion. Uh, it's for obviously to support people of color and the initiative going on, uh, support everybody with the current circumstances that's sweeping the nation right now. And then the, the right now, what process is happening? Uh, so what we're in right now is the mash process. Uh, if you want to take a look, so basically this is the conversion of the grain into sugars uh, for the basis of the beer. So what you see right now is basically the wort recirculating. And then 
people, uh, breweries are still able to sign up. And then there's a bigger purpose. Y'all are launching on July 4th. But these proceeds for Black is Beautiful, where is that money going uh, towards? So we're asking for all the breweries to participate, to donate 100% of proceeds uh, to local establishments that support police brutality reform and legal defenses. And for us personally, we'll be do donating to the Know Your Rights camp. And then again, I, th I believe the audio was cut off a little bit at the beginning. So we just want to make sure that uh, Marcus's message is shared. He is a black business owner and you felt called to create this movement, this campaign after what we've seen these last few days. Correct. So as a black business owner, um, I had to figure out how I wanted to help out and how I could support my community. So once again, this campaign, it's already launched. Uh, breweries are still able to sign up. In San Antonio, there's been a big outpouring of support nationwide, worldwide, close to 300 breweries here in San Antonio. There's launches on July 4th. And we'll have a full article on KSAT.com. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Look forward to it. Alicia, thank you. You have a good weekend. Got another great story here. A Minnesota bakery has donated 800 plus cakes to 2020 high school graduates. This is happening in Minnesota. His mm -hmm. name is Bill Hansich. He is the owner of Hansich Bakery and Coffee Shop, and he just wanted to do something sweet for the senior students graduating from Red Wing High School this year. That's right. Of course, they, you know, graduated or finishing school on a difficult note. The small business owner initially planned to bake and donate a cake for all 220 members of Red Wing's senior class. However, word spread and donations poured in from schools, parents, residents, and other business owners owners with requests to bake cakes for their seniors too. To date, the bakery has produced 800 free frosted cakes for the 2020 class uh, grads of 12 different schools in that area. Started out as an idea to support our seniors here in Red Wing and it grew and blossomed. We're accepting donations because 12 towns and 800 cakes is a lot of baking. Yeah, he hopes the free cakes encourages senior students to celebrate their achievements and look forward to their big futures ahead of them. Calls it a labor of love, but of course it is. 939, 80 degrees, you're watching GMSA at nine. Some good news for basketball fans. NBA owners approved the 22 season restart plan. RJ Marquez and David Sears join us with the latest on what sports fans can expect. Can I just say we're giddy talking about this, even in the commercial break? <laughs> no 942, way. there's an official plan in place for the NBA to return this summer and the Spurs are invited to the party. That's right, we're getting ready to party with the Spurs. David Sears is back with us, and RJ Marquez joins us live from his house to break down all those details. All right, guys, so it's done deal. Fill us in on how this is going to work. Well, that's still a good question. Exactly how it's going to work. We just <laughs> yeah. know it's going to work, and it's going to start. They're going to have training camp mid, late July, and then they'll kick off the uh, regular season, what's left of it, eight games in a regular season on July 31st. I think we have some, uh, RJ, I think we have the, uh, the, the dates, the calendar. We're going we're gonna to throw that up there for you. I think you they're working on it. To look yep. at that, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So July 31st, uh, the end of the regular season and the playoffs and finals would possibly run through October 12th. So uh, that is the latest possible day that they would have game seven of the NBA finals. And uh, a lot of people wondering how the Spurs would kind of be able to make up ground in the standings. Well, they don't necessarily need to. All they need to do is get to the ninth seed and then you would uh, get into like a play in tournament or uh, with the eighth seeded team which right now is Memphis, because I don't think Memphis is going to lose as much ground as they've already gained on the other teams. But that's a way to uh, that's a way to sort of benefit the other teams from still playing hard. Yeah, the, the, the thing about it is, though, the Spurs still have to get by three other teams to get to the ninth spot, though. They're only four games behind Memphis, but there are three other teams between them and Memphis for that for that ninth spot. So they, they definitely do have some work cut out for them. They'll have eight games and they'll play one set of back-to-backs each team. There's 22 teams. The rest of the teams, they get to stay home and watch. The other teams will be, uh, will be playing in those, uh, those uh, other six teams. The eight, the, uh, you got your 16. Right. You get your eight mm -hmm. and eight. And then the rest of the teams are playing for that, uh, that play-in spot. So if they can get within four games. But guys, to be, to, be, to be honest, there's mm -hmm. still a lot we don't know. We don't know logistics as far as yeah. broadcasts. We don't know schedules yet. I mean, there's still yeah. obviously a lot to work out still. 
Yeah, and it could all be done remotely. I think that uh, what the NBA was kind of talking about recently was kind of uh, putting some different camera angles on the court so that, you know, fans kind of get a little bit more uh, angles and different views of the game to kind of enhance that experience. But I can't imagine that the NBA is going to want a lot of media there, a lot of broadcast people there, because they really kind of want to keep this contained to the players coaches and staffs that are uh, going to be in Orlando. And, da and David, you were talking about earlier um, the logistics of keeping everyone safe, the uh -huh. amount of hours between playtime, where they're going to be staying, not being able to see family members. This Disney complex is huge, so they're going to be able to utilize like three courts and between each game on a court, they'll take four hours to clean everything up, disinfect it all, and then they'll be ready for the next game. They, like I said, each team will play eight games of, of a remaining regular season, and they'll have a couple of back-to-backs. So they're doing everything, everything uh, safety-wise. However, we just, uh, just, just saw an article on ESPN about Adam Silver was on TNT last night talking about head coaches who are older in the league and whether or not they could be on the bench. We're talking about Greg Popovich, who is 71. You're talking about guys who are 60, 65 and older, whether or not they can even coach on the bench during these games. And I know uh, Alvin Gentry, who is 65, Pelicans head coach, he got a little upset about that. And then Adam Silver kind of admitted maybe he jumped the gun on this. But, you know, they were going to say have him step back off the bench and maybe coach from in front of the locker room or coach from have their, you know, their whiteboard or whatever. So that's still something that they have to work out because, you know, we, we've learned over the, uh, over the last few months that uh, older people are seem to be with underlying health conditions more susceptible to uh, coronavirus and the uh, COVID-19. So they're trying to figure all that out, but they, yeah. <laughs> a couple of coaches got upset when they about to sit. <laughs> I think that's part of a reason why they're really going to limit the amount of people that are there, including media. And I think they've also talked about just taking a smaller group of uh, team personnel also that for every uh, team that's going to be in attendance there. So it's going to be very interesting. Yep. We have not seen the schedule. They apparently are still going to go kind of by what the schedule, the previous schedule was. So the Spurs still have a pretty tough road to get I, to the playoffs. I, I got a feeling we're going to see a lot of interviews by Zoom. Oh, yeah, we so, are. So post <laughs> came it. by post game by zoom <laughs> all right guys so, so there you go we're out of time we're going to probably touch on this more next week and of, of course spurs fans as soon as we get any sort of schedule we're going to send that out in a push alert and all that kind of stuff you will know asap uh, asap pick the right acronym mark david rj thank you guys have thank a good you, weekend guys. well let's talk about the weather because mm -hmm. justin i did not like seeing those that 104 on monday but this weekend I mean, it's going to be hot, but it's a, it's a typical summer weekend. Yeah, I'd actually rather talk about basketball right now with the, yeah, the heat too. that's coming up. But hey, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the heat is going to be a big deal this weekend and uh, next week. Rainfall, too. You know, we, we had a pretty good surplus there for a while. Month of May, we've only had about uh, 900s, but we did good uh, last month. Actually, I should say June. That should not say month. We did well in May. June has about 900s of an inch. There we go. And uh, for the year, we're at 13.27 which is just a little bit above average, but I'm scared that we'll probably drop below average here soon once again because rain is pretty much staying out of the forecast. There were some thunderstorms yesterday up there across the Texas Panhandle. Sometimes with this flow, you can get these storms to work all the way down into South Texas, but that did not happen. These died down and we're not looking for that uh, today or tomorrow for that matter. It, uh, high pressure is really gonna start to build in actually and uh, take control of our forecast. Here's a look at the visible satellite, and we've had those morning clouds a little thicker off to the north and west there up across the hill country here in San Antonio, just partly cloudy right now, and that morning cloud deck is really starting to scatter out. Just like yesterday, we'll probably go partly cloudy by midday and then mostly sunny during the late afternoon hours. 78 degrees right now in Comfort, 77 Bernie Stage, 81 in New Braunfels, 75 in Floresville, and then some 80s down there. Creaso Springs to Katua, Victoria down to Beeville too, checking in in the low 80s. And those dew points are just so high, low to mid 70s. So this is in the impressive category. We've got to worry about the heat index today. This is what I think it'll feel like around 5 o'clock. 97 here in town, 98 Gonzales. I think we'll see some triple digits uh, there for our eastern counties because humidity levels will be so high. But the air temperatures will be high out west, and they'll still have a little bit of humidity too. So. Bottom line, uh, the heat index is going to be way up there this afternoon, and it only goes up from here because I think we're going to see some uh, pretty impressive numbers going forward. Outside, 81 degrees, southerly winds at about 8. And uh, looking at the tropics, we've still got Tropical Storm Crystal Ball down there, and right now it 
It is uh, trying to reemerge out over the Gulf of Mexico. It's very lopsided right now. All the thunderstorms are east of the center. So that tells you it's not a very organized system at the moment. But as it moves north, and it's going to do so pretty fast, uh, we'll see this thing redevelop into a tropical storm probably. Right now, winds are at 35 miles per hour. Latest track does take it towards Louisiana. We feel pretty certain about that now. Winds will be about 60 miles per hour uh, Sunday afternoon when it uh, likely will make landfall. And then by Monday, it's starting to fall apart as it gets pulled north very quickly. For us, no rain, maybe, just maybe a few clouds, but that's it. And the forecast shows high pressure uh, moving out of the way, but uh, we'll see it build back in and we'll get some sinking air on the backside of this thing. And that's going to result in some big time temperatures Tuesday afternoon. Triple digits, a good bet for not only us, a large portion of Texas, and this could be record setting heat. Tuesday is going to be by far our hottest day. A little bit of a front moves through. Yeah, it still says 101 on Wednesday, but it'll be more of a dry heat. This front will sweep out some of the humidity and cool us down just a hair. 93 degrees coming up today. Tomorrow, 95, 97 Sunday. And there are those triple digits both Monday and Tuesday. Guys. Thank you, Justin. 949, 81 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. Checking Transkai, 10 upper and lower levels there at Calabra, no problem, 1604. I think that was Calabra. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And I-10 at Bernie Stage Road, all things considered, that construction zone looks pretty good right now. And we're up to 81 degrees. We're going to see 93 this afternoon. Lots of sun all the way through that forecast and some really hot temperatures this weekend, but also next week, some triple digits and record challenging heat, I might add, Monday and Tuesday. We have another article from KSAT.com. Perfect for the weekend. The headline, nine swimming holes near San Antonio that have reopened amid corona the coronavirus pandemic. Yeah, when you see that 104 on Justin's screen, I mean, this is perfect. You have Jacob's Well Natural Area and Blue Hole. That's in Wimberley. That's about an hour's drive from downtown San Antonio. It's open for swimming. It is. Uh, for more, go to visit Wimberley.com. Also, and, and don't write in. Uh, it's either Krause or Krause Springs in Spicewood reopened May 21st, about an hour and a half drive from downtown. Camping and swimming allowed, but you have to pay a fee to enter. Schumacher Crossing is located between Ingram and Hunt along I-39. It's about an hour and a half drive from downtown. It's a popular spot for swimming. It gets crowded on the weekend, so make sure you get there early. Okay. Uh, Blanco State Park is a great trip. That's about an hour north of the city. Aquatic Complex at Landa Park in New Braunfels is the shortest drive from San Antonio, but only 40 minutes away, and it and, opens June 10th. And the last one that we've got from this article, KSAT.com, Guadalupe River State Park, less than an hour from most of San Antonio. It has swimming holes, but also great for camping, fishing, hiking, and more. I'm not going to tell you which of these I fish at all the time. I know. Because I don't want to give it away. I just want to say Guadalupe River State Park is my favorite. It's but you have to get you have to get there early though to get yeah. a good spot. I want to check out uh, Jacob's Well sometime up there I in the uh, Wimberley area. As well, everybody have a great weekend.